Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers. If you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir Lee's Path. So the last place we left off, we were actually meeting up with the gang at the restaurant, and I believe this is the episode where we're gonna get a really, really great picture of Lee. Um, some new artwork that uh, they got commissioned for this game, and oh my goodness, I cannot wait. So anyway, guys, let's jump right into it. Please sit back and enjoy for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you're up. Okay, let's go. After another block, I spot the building I've been searching for. It's a moderately long, single-floor building, modeled after a shack. The sign above it looks intentionally run down, spelling out the name Snapping Jaws. It's a restaurant and a bar, only a short walk away from the beach. It's not shocking to see most of the tables occupied by people, leaving only the ones outside vacant. It's surprisingly nerve-wracking to walk into a restaurant alone, almost shameful that I arrived without any company. I know it's a silly thought, of, but it still causes a prickling sensation on the back of my neck, causing the entire thing to itch. After taking a couple of seconds to strengthen my fortitude, I finally push forward through the open door and I'm greeted by the instantly recognizable smell of fish. I can't imagine what this must be like for someone with a sensitive nose like Lucas. When Lily asked us to meet somewhere near the ocean for lunch and Oscar suggested this place, I should have maybe taken the hint that it would probably be primarily seafood. It doesn't take me long to find the table where our group is sitting. The otter sits tall like a beacon despite the table being on the opposite side of the room, next to two open doors leading, leading to a dock-like balcony. <laughs> there they are. Walking closer, I'm able to see only two people are sitting down so far, Lily and Oscar. The shared giggles between them are light and fun. For a moment, I think they don't notice me heading towards them, but a glance out of the corner of Oscar's eyes and the flick of Lily's golden ears tells me otherwise. The two of them are on opposite sides of the booth. Between, the, between them is a long wooden table resembling a surfboard. I'm about to ask where I should sit, but Oscar beats me to the punch. Ha! <laughs> let, let me get up and you can sit here. Then we'll figure out where I'll sit. That okay, man? He, yeah, I, I mean, that seems fine to me. I think we should wait till everyone gets here, and then we can figure out where everyone will go. That way we can fit everyone pretty well, but we'll sort it out when everyone arrives. Uh, oh, okay. It's overwhelming. I hadn't even said a word before I got bombarded by the two of them. It didn't even seem planned. The two of them are just moving at a pace I can't keep up with, feeding off of each other's energy. Ooh, excuse me. Oscar slips out of the booth and stands up straight. His... Oh, goodness, sorry about that. And my air caught in my lungs. <clears throat> caught in my throat. Ugh. His muscles flexing as he stretches. I try not to stare, but it's hard when he's standing right next to me. In a vain attempt to keep some dignity, I focus on Lily, who looks like she's holding back a giggle as she watches me. She's still wearing that yellow cardigan. Its soft curl of color and complements her light beige fur. My nose might not be as strong as other species, but the floral perfume she's wearing is pleasantly gentle. Her eyes are her eyes are a little dark, as she as if she had been up all night or crying. That doesn't stop positive energy beaming from her. Oscar finally fi Oscar finally finishes stretching, allowing me to look back towards him. He's staring right at me with a disappointed pout. Even if it's fake, it still makes me feel a little sad, but that quickly disappears as his grin returns. He gestures towards his side of the booth with both arms. It looks goofy with how casually he's dressed, in the same tank top and shorts from before. Ho, oh, such a gentleman! Lily giggles before giving an overly dramatic swoon, causing my eyes to roll, but a smile to grow despite my best efforts. It's hard to not feel happy around these two. They really know how to boost the atmosphere around them. Sliding into the booth, I sit across from Lily, and, it, and it's strange to sit with someone around my height considering just how much taller than me Lay and Oscar are. Lee and Oscar, damn it. And a one horse open, Lay. <laughs> Marcus was always a lot taller than me, than me too, but I bet even now I wouldn't be close. I do to never grow, stuck at the same height I was in middle school. <laughs> Did you get it better sleep last night, last, last time, dude? No nightmares? <laughs> Not tonight. I passed out as soon as I got home. I'm feeling a lot better today, actually. My stomach grumbles, and I can feel my ears flushing as Lily looks away, holding back her laughter. The one saving grace for my pride is that Oscar looks oblivious. His ears aren't as sensitive as the canines. I'm just a bit hungry. I didn't eat last night, and I only had some toast before going to my li to my literature class. You came to the right place, then. I found it in my freshman year, and I've come I've been coming back ever since. The fish here is the best. Trust me. I've gone through most of the menu, but their sup but their snapper rocks. I've never really eaten much seafood. The smell always scares me off, even if they look delicious. Surimi in grocery stores is especially tempting, but I never got the courage to try any of it. Surimi's really good. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't even know how to cook it. Lee mentioned cooking for his sister. I wonder if he's a good cook and if he'd be willing to let me try some of his food. 
Ozzy, do you think I can talk to Wallace alone for a bit? I just want us to have a bit of privacy. Oscar doesn't appear at all surprised with Willie's suggestion, and it makes me wonder if they chatted about this beforehand, before I arrived. I wouldn't put it past her to plan this. He glances towards me, and his smile widens. His eyes shimmer as he stares down into my own before giving me a wink. I'm left to gape by Oscar once again. I'm still unsure of what exactly Oscar is thinking, what he, is thinking when he does what he does. Is he just that much of a frat bro that he doesn't understand what I'm, what he's doing? Or is he just teasing me and joking around? Or is he actually flirting with me? Man, I just... I don't know. Hell, chill at one of the seats at the bar where I'll definitely be out of reach and totally unable to hear you. Lily gives him a glare that reminds me of the time when my mother caught me skipping school that one time. I never even thought of doing it again after that. Just the memory of that sends a shiver down my spine. Okay, okay, I'll go to the far end of the bar. Don't stress, man. Great. I'll see you, send you a text when we're done. This feels a little intimidating. <laughs> that causes Lily to laugh, and Oscar's expression to turn into a mysterious grin before walking off, neither of which does anything to help make me feel less worried about what's about to happen. Don't worry. I just want to make sure you're alright and hear what and hear about what happened what I missed yesterday. I'm doing a lot better now. I ended up heading off heading off with Lay Lee to pick up his sister. She's really funny. She reminds me of Oscar actually. I feel almost like I'm talking to my mother, trying to avoid saying the wrong thing and getting scolded. It seems silly, but the way Lily is leaning her chin in the palm in the palm of her left hand gives me waves of nostalgia. I can almost smell the lavender in our backyard if the scent of fish wasn't so overwhelming. She only gives me a gentle smile and doesn't probe me any further, but I can tell she wants to ask more about what she did, what we did. It's a massive strain to hold back a blush from showing in my ears. I barely stop myself from jumping when the, she rests her free hand on my own. I didn't see her moving her other arm. I'm getting too lost in my thoughts. I'm glad you're doing a lot better. You look like you were having a panic attack or something. It's pretty terrifying to see you suddenly freak out like that. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to... No, no, stop that. You didn't do anything wrong, but you can tell me what... It, but can you tell me what happened? I just had a pretty messed up dream, that's all. What was it about? You don't have to be scared, I won't judge you. I opened my mouth, but after a moment's hesitation, I closed it again. I can easily find an excuse if I want to, but that's a disservice to Lily. She's reaching out and offering to help. It's not fair to her. I saw you had to go through that. That must have been scary. Yeah, I'm just glad it was a dream. That diary must have really messed me up that night. Something about reading about the average day of someone who killed three people just made me feel sick. I shouldn't have pushed you to read that book. I didn't think it would have this much of an effect on you. If you want, we can switch op we can switch topics of our project. I know everyone else wouldn't mind. No, it's fine. I'll just make sure not to stay up all night reading it again. I think the lack of sleep didn't help. She squeezes my hand in gentle reassurance. It's soft and full of warmth, like being covered in a fluffy blanket. Looking towards her face, I can't help but wonder if I had been, if I had been straight, if she, if I had been straight, if she would have been my type. Would straight Wallace have gotten a crush on Lily? I can't even imagine what straight me would have looked like. Or what straight me would have liked. Her ears twitch and she glances towards the door. Following her gaze, I can see that Lucas has just arrived. Oscar has gotten up from the bar to talk with him, but I don't think the conversation is exactly going to plan. Or maybe it is, because it doesn't look like they're actually talking, even if everything Lucas says is followed by a roll of his eyes and what I can only assume is a snide, snide remark. Maybe that's the idea. Just annoy the fox to the point where he gets used to it. Lee's already here, if you're wondering. Lily whispers that across the table, despite there being no chance that anyone would hear us. But if she's right, I can, can't see Lee anywhere, not even outside with the other two. Really? Where is he? Out back, apparently. He was already here before we arrived, but texted us he wanted some alone time. Oscar told him that he was going to come out to see him, but he was pretty firm in telling him no. That everyone's here, then. Looks like. I look towards the two large open doors and that look like they lead somewhere behind the restaurant. I didn't get a good look through it when I walked in, but I'm certain it was a spacious dock-like area. Lee wants to be left alone, huh? I wonder if this is because of what happened yesterday. I hope he still isn't still feeling guilty. I already forgave him for that. Maybe I should go check up on him, but he did say he wanted time alone. You're thinking pretty hard. What's wrong? Just wondering if I should go check up on Lee, but he didn't want to be disturbed. Lee's eyes burst to life at that, twinkling something fiercer than I've ever seen on the canine before. It's mischievous and terrifying. Why do I feel like I've walked into some kind of trap? I think you should. I don't think he'll mind if you, if you want to talk to him. He's always been rather fond of you. I think he just didn't want Oscar to come annoy him. That makes sense, I suppose. I'll have to do, I'll have to do that after our chat. 
Knowing him, he's probably worried that I didn't take care of myself when I got home. If he knew I went to sleep without eating, he'd probably get scolded. I best to keep that to myself. Eventually, Oscar heads back inside and collapses at the bar, looking rather pleased with himself, but Lucas stays behind, staring up at something we can't see. <laughs> what do you think he's looking at? Maybe there's something in the sky on or on the roof. It's hard to tell. I think he might he might be stalling. He doesn't seem to be the most fond of crowds. That makes sense. Neither am I. She giggles at that, a warm and soothing sound that perfectly encapsulates this relaxing atmosphere. We've only known each other for a couple of days, but it feels like we've been friends for years. If things start to get bad again and you don't want to make a bad impression on the boys, you can always crash at my place. My bed's big enough for uh, both of us easily. We're pretty small, plus Dad's a great cook. The kind offer is overshadowed by the ominous mention of her father. I don't really know anything about him, but some, but someone as confident as Lily must have an absolutely terrifying father. I don't think your dad would approve of you sleeping in the same room as a boy. I get the feeling he won't worry. That causes me to pause, my eyebrows furrowing in confusion. Then the realization of what exactly she's implying hits me, and I can, f and I can feel any argument die on my tongue. Oh yeah, I guess that makes sense. Now, if it was Lee, Lucas, or especially Oscar, I don't think he let me. I didn't think I stood out that much. It's not a bad thing, just don't sleep with my dad, okay? I recoil in disgust, and the thought of having sex with a friend's dad just feels wrong. Plus, he might be at least in his 40s, right? But maybe he's... Ah, no, no, let's not go down that route. Ew, that's so gross! Hey, I'll let you know that my dad is great, and you'd be lucky to have him. Can we please stop talking about me having sex with your dad? Fine, 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 but I meant what I said. I know it can be a bit hard to ask the boys for somewhere to stay, and us lovers and those who are bad for us gotta stick to... For us, and blah, let me even try that. Could I ask the boys for somewhere to stay, and us lovers of those who are bad for us gotta stick together? There you go. Why would I not be able to ask them? Her smile curls up. The mischievous edge to it gives me an uneasy feeling. It takes a lot of willpower to not break eye contact and focus on something else. Well, you know, they're all a catch, and I bet you, and I bet you want to make a good impression. That definitely isn't what I had expected. What? She's leaning back against the chair, looking to the side with a curious smile covering her face. Despite its inquisitive nature, it's still gentle. There's a noticeable hesitance to her, a feeling that she's letting me choose how far I want this conversation to go. I'm distinctly reminded of my mother sitting outside on a summer afternoon talking to my aunt as I play with Marcus. Not wanting to feel melancholic, I push the memory away, forcing myself not to dwell and bring myself back to Lily's sideward, sideward glance. Hmm. Following her gaze, I can see Lucas is still standing there, staring up at something. He's dressed up too formal for the situation, which isn't, which isn't too abnormal for him, but it looks a little messier than usual, like he did it in a rush. I'm asking if any of the boys have caught your eye. That brings my attention crashing back towards Lily like she's a freight train and I'm just a small fruit cart stuck on the tracks. She's still watching Lucas, but I somehow feel like she's looking at me from every direction at once. I know she's not being malicious and she's just overly eagerly appro She's just overly eagerly approaching girl talk, but I can't help but feel overwhelmed. This isn't something I've ever talked to someone about. It caught my eyes? I... Wallace, you know it's okay to have a crush on them, right? Lee is basically a bad boy punk fantasy come true, Oscar looks like a porn star, and Lucas has this hidden, in, has this hidden endearing side to him. Turning back to me, I can see her gaze is soft, as if they were trying to calm me down through some hidden psychic powers. Regardless, it works, and I can feel my heart rate slow down, my blood no longer rushing to my ears. Relax, it's just girl talk, no need to stress. Right, yeah, just, just chatting. So? I'm not sure yet. I don't think it's developed enough to be anything. I only just met them. Her slow nod is both understanding but also unsatisfied. I could probably toss her more of a bone, but I don't want to set myself up for something. I don't even know how to explain this to myself, let alone her. What about you? Are you into any of them? Any of the my, any of my extremely gay classmates? Right, that's a stupid question. I'm an idiot. I try to ignore the itching sensation crawling on my neck and maintain eye contact, desperate to not die from embarrassment. Or, you know, at all, you must be a catch, right? I like to think I'm a catch, but no, no one right now. I like all of them as friends, but I don't think I'd want to date any of them. I'd want something more normal. More normal? I don't think they're weird. She quirks an eyebrow upwards before glancing over at the boys again. It's only for a moment before she brings her attention back to me. Flicking my gaze over to the boys, I can see Oscar's now standing up and flexing his arms in front of Lucas, who is trying desperately to look at anything but towards the bulging bicep in front of him. It's a good thing Lee isn't here, because I can imagine him scolding Oscar for acting like this. 
I don't think he let this happen. Not for long, at least. You're a perfect match for them. What? That's all I had to talk about. Now we just gotta wait for everyone to get ready. Might end up having to get you to get... I mean, get you to go get Lucas if, Lee's, if Lee's back before him. Why me? He seems more comfortable around you than the rest of us. I try my best, but I think he prefers you. I don't really get it. I haven't done anything special. I don't think I have any... I don't think I have, at least. She shrugs at that, brushing it off with such nonchalance that it makes me seem more... That it makes it seem more like a matter of fact instead of just her personal theory. I'm not quite sure either, but it's a good thing. I'm not quite sure either, but it's a good thing. He's more comfortable around you, and that's definitely helping him mesh with our group more. I don't think he'd stay around if it was just Oscar, Lee, and myself. I think I, that I can agree with. He doesn't seem to like the others nearly as much, but I don't think he dislikes them either. They just need some time to get used to each other. Looking towards the door just beyond the, just behind the opposite side of our booth, I can't help but wonder what Lee's doing out there. I think I'm going to go check up on Lee if that's okay. Go ahead. I had a feeling you'd be saying that. There's a twinkle in her eye, and I really don't want to think about what she might mean by that. Who knows what's going on in her head? I just hope she doesn't tell Oscar and make things awkward. Ooh. All right, it's time to see that possum boy. Mmm, let's get us a possum. <laughs> Got him thirsty as fuck. Ooh. Okay. Stepping through the back door, the salty ocean breeze rushes over me. The refreshing scent is nostalgic, reminding me of the days when Marcus and I would come here in the summer. Behind the restaurant isn't just a little zone for people to eat and smoke, but an entire wharf that's been remodeled to have tables and benches. All the refurbished areas are directly next to the restaurant itself, leaving the far parts of the wharf untouched. There's barely one out here, likely due to the lukewarm autumn weather and the chilling sea breeze. This place must be a hot spot in the summertime. Walking across the pier, I can't place Lee amongst the few faces I see. There's only a restaurant worker on break, a fisherman who's consumed by his lunch, and an... Oh! Oh my! Ha! <laughs> oh my god, that is gorgeous! Oh my god, that is incredibly detailed! Mmm. I believe the... I think... Guys, correct me if I'm wrong. The, the artwork is done by Shuk Salamander, I believe. He's a very, very talented artist. He worked on Psychic Connections. Still working on it. Hopefully. I, I hope that project is still going. I, I really missed that game. It really helped kickstart my channel. <laughs> anyway. On the far side of the wharf, leaning against a railing just above the edge before the water is Lee. He's wearing an outfit that's completely different from what I'm used to seeing him in. Instead of his usual leather jacket, he's wearing a pink hoodie that cuts off before it even reaches the middle of his back, revealing his torso for all to see. On his lower back, just above his usual style of black jeans, is a striking tattoo of a red rose hovering just above his belt. That must have been what I just saw yesterday. This entire outfit is such a ch such a change from what he normally wears. It's no wonder I didn't recognize him at first. If it wasn't for his fur color and hairstyle remaining unchanged, I might not have been able to find him at all. Over his shoulder, I can see Lee looking out at the water. He takes a moment to look back towards me, locking our eyes for a moment before returning them to the endless ripples of the ocean. There's a piece to him that's so different from the rest of our group. It's melancholic, but serene like watching dead leaves plucking off trees as the wind blows by. Maybe I shouldn't disturb him. You don't have to stare from back there. The words are aimed at me, but he doesn't take his eyes off the horizon where the sea and sky coalesce. Let's see. I don't know if this is a copyrighted music. Let me turn it down a little bit. There we go. The words are aimed at me, but he doesn't take his eyes off the horizon where the sea and sky coalesce. I can feel his focus on me, but it's not judgmental, more wary. About what? I don't know. S sorry! I just wasn't expecting... Actually, no, this music isn't cut. There we go. Sorry, I just wasn't expecting... Yeah, I figured. I knew it was a bad idea to wear this, but I promised Charlie I would. Oh, right, yesterday. I totally forgot about that. He snorts at that, and his mouth quirks into a small smile. It's a lot tamer than his usual grins, but it feels more appropriate with the mood between us. There's a tension that's not usually there between the two of us. I didn't even realize how comfortable we had gotten with each other with each other over the, just a couple of days. It was only Monday when I thought he was scary and thought he might hurt me. Well, I guess he did, but that doesn't count. She's not the type to let things like that go. Real piece of work. But you love her. Yeah, yeah, I love her. Don't get smarmy with me, kid. He reaches over and tries to ruffle my hair, but I move out of the way just in time. That lights a fire in his eyes, and he lunges for me, trying to reach my fluffy bangs. 
In an attempt to elude him once more, I try to back away again, but the heel of my foot hits a wooden stump and I lose my balance, prepped to fall onto the hard wooden floor. Except I don't. In an intense moment of deja vu, Lee catches me before I hit the ground, scooping an arm around my chest and hoisting me back onto my feet. I would say you're acting like my sister, but she has great balance. S sorry, I got a bit too excited. Don't apologize, kid. Just be more careful. He releases me from his embrace and awkwardly, st and awkwardly stumble to a more appropriate distance, trying to ignore the heat on my cheeks. The warmth becomes a lot harder to ignore when my eyes catch a glimpse of his stomach, the entire thing revealed with it by his low-cut shirt. There's not much that I haven't seen before, but the thought of getting caught staring is enough to intensify the embarrassment coursing through me. Just don't think about it too much, Wallace. Focus on something else. God, Lee, you're a hottie. Ooh, Lord. Mm, well, get me some possum. Mm -mm, well, get me some possum. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!